Okay, my excellent friends, way do you see this? The Department of Energy explains neutrinos. Well, they can explain them. I can show them. Okay, they have electron neutrinos, muon neutrinos, and a tau neutrino, which in my mind is nothing more than the electron and the muon neutrino tied together. They can change between types as they travel, something scientists call neutrino oscillations. Let's see if we can find that. Okay, so they talked about three different types of neutrinos. Well, I say there's two, and then the two of them together make the third type. So we have a muon neutrino, which is a black ball. We have an electron neutrino, which is a white ball. They're normally tied together. When they explode, the muon goes on its way and does not change. The electron neutrino turns into a shower. And here they are doing the, precisely that. And this is at the Venturi that we designed to create a restriction that was so specific that it only allowed the white to come through and the black particles cannot get through because these are fixed particles, the black ones. The white ones are called point particles. They can go small and they can go big. The black cannot change its size. Okay, this is the whole scenario of light coming through the air just it's it's a pulsed red laser so we're seeing the the tip of the light coming through concussing with all the other electric particles that are in the air because they have fields as well these have to push those fields out of the way this appears to be acceleration of this light and what is in that light is these particles which are the photons and those photons consist both of the black and white particles, which are the white ones are called the electron neutrinos. The black part is called the muon neutrino. Attached together, they are uh, tau neutrinos. Now, we see the acceleration happening here of that particle, which we just saw down here. And that particle is now accelerating, it looks to me. And at this point, they begin to concuss extremely and at this point right here they divide and that's what causes the split between the muon and electron neutrino I'll show you those in a second and then we end up getting the Higgs fields when the the um, electron neutrino reconcusses and reestablishes itself right here between this part here we're looking into this beam so we're looking into this beam and it's coming out at us this distance right here is this distance and this is where the collision of this unseen particle bangs back into the particles that all of these particles that exist in space and boom it reestablishes itself as a photon here it's not a photon anymore it's an electron neutrino and the muon neutrinos are also not photons anymore they are outside all they want to do is get back together that's why the black ones are gravity and they're also in my opinion dark matter and dark energy they don't reflect they don't absorb they don't emit and they do not compress and they are almost the entire weight of light and light does have a weight to it not just to give you a little icing on the cake this is a very very strange particle and it appears to have emanated from a reverse spinning particle only time I've ever seen it this is light coming through hot and then cooling down as it exits the venture hot cooler all right so we know we can slow it down after it leaves the venturi and we know looks to me we're speeding it up before it hits the venturi so that gives a lot of problems with Einstein and his theory of light and so forth now I know he's talking about a vacuum doesn't matter if we can accelerate it in the particles of air well that's that's better than accelerating it in a vacuum so I think we got an issue here with um, with Mr. Einstein's theory all right so let's see if we can put it all together what we're looking for is light, and that was light that we shined through this Venturi, which was from a red laser. Here's how it started, then it accelerated, then it hit the Venturi. At the Venturi, the black and the white separated. 
the black separated from the white completely, totally. Only thing that was left through here was white, a 100% white. I mean, not a taste of blackness came through here. The black balls are too big to get through, and they came back and reattached over here. Precisely what CERN and Fermilab wrote in their description of a muon neutrino, an electron neutrino, is the black and white ball, and then it turned into a muon and electron shower when it turned into Cherenkov radiation, which is what we have here is the Cherenkov. And that is what the particles were. Now the only ones that could get through were the white ones. The black ones were disassociated. Now Fermilab says that's precisely what we should expect to see and that they're trying to get is the fixed particle, which is the black one with a little haze around it, and the white fuzzy one, which is the the one that can squirt through, and that's precisely what we showed. There's the black one. does not change. That, that does not change. You see here? They're not changing. Same size ball here as it is over here. So, and that is almost all the weight of light is in that black particle. Alright, it's just basically as simple as this. Everything is constructed of electrons. Electrons are made of these two particles, a muon and electron neutrino. We separate them, as you saw, the black one away from the white. Photons are made of two electrons, back to back. These will bounce, these will burn. Protons are made of 1839 of these, which is electrons. And they form, instead of one big proton, which is always we're told, it's 1839 electrons. That's the new, and that's it. After that, it's all over. Everything is made of these. And we could see that we could separate those. That's the big kicker. I never knew that was possible, but it, obviously we've seen it done. See, these are the same as the red, only the green are much more powerful. Impact is much stronger. Here's the red ones. As they come forward, they're coming this direction. And they start to be seen here. You can't see them up here because they're not in line with the Venturi. The Venturi is right over here. So they're coming across. And they start to gain energy here more, 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 and then they explode. That's what we see right here where the black separates from the white. Now, here's the big sequence altogether. Let's start right from the beginning. There's the pushing and shoving of just light coming through the air. That's And that's at the speed of light because it's light. So I don't have to accelerate any protons. And we're starting with the smallest particles really basically that exist other than the electron and the muon neutrinos and so forth. So we are at the speed of light concussing and then because of the venture it appears that it's accelerated. So I don't know, I think we got trouble with Einstein. Now, that is the particle right there, which is the particle right here. I showed you it comes green, it comes blue, it comes red. Blue is a little hot to see the real architecture of it. But you can see it's coming in really hot here. And then all of a sudden, and it rolls off to the side because it's slowing down. You see how wide it is here and how hot it is up here? All right, now, these are the Higgs fields. And this is a particle that I am, I don't know about this one. Because that, that's the only one I've ever seen of it. And it appears that something came through backwards and was gathering energy. And when it concussed, it spit out energy. I don't know. This, that's the only one I've ever seen. But normally they come like this. They come out in these fields. Even this one is a, an anomaly. You see how it's blue here? It shouldn't be like this. They should all be red. That one's being pinched one side and on the other side, turn it at blue. All right, so it's very interesting stuff. All right, I, I showed you, I'm certain, that we focused ours through a Venturi to create the neutrinos, which separated them. No question we separated the black and the white, which is muon electron neutrinos. No question we were using light, which is a laser. So we didn't have to accelerate anything, but we did. So... Here we go. Now, this is how to make neutrinos. As you know, neutrinos are neutral, which means that the magnets in a particle accelerator can't manipulate them. So making a neutrino beam doesn't actually start with neutrinos. Instead, the process uses protons.
All right, there's the problem. Instead of using the light particles, they're using these just gigantic particles, and they're trying to get them up to the speed of light, which we were starting with the speed of light. To irresponsibly oversimplify things, you take some really speedy protons, aim them where you want your neutrinos to go, smash them into a target, and then wait. Let particle decay do all the hard work. Accelerate the protons. We don't have to accelerate anything. We have light. Of course, that's easier said than done. Getting those protons close to the speed of light requires some incredible engineering in our accelerator complex. In fact, this kind of physics research isn't even possible without a host of people who build these systems and keep them running smoothly. Billions and billions of dollars spent on this, and they, they have not been able to do what I did. I've asked one of Fermilab's accelerator operators, Laura Bolt, to help explain how neutrino beams are made in a bit more detail. Okay, I was thrilled to get this from a guy or a person called You Wish. And they say, I work at, Nemes at your nemesis, which is Fermilab, and in the same building as Don Lincoln. He's two floors above mine, and I see him in the elevator, but I don't know him personally. You would be surprised to know quite a few big names have looked at your work and even commented here on my channel under pseudonyms, but your reaction is always to reject what they are saying. Well, I... I reject it because I present evidence against it and then they just dismiss me so they have tried to help you understand where you're wrong. No they haven't, they just said that you're wrong because you're not using the peer review method and the scientific method, you're just showing evidence. That's, well, that's what I do as evidence. You always accuse them of menticide and then block them out. If I just continue to be assaulted when I present evidence and they cannot counteract that evidence and continuously tell me that I'm just an idiot, yes, I block them, no question whatsoever. Good way to burn bridges. Now, I'm not being, I'm, I just didn't set fire to any bridges whatsoever. I am building bridges and they are burnt from the other side. Right. They played extracts from my videos on the big screen in 2019 Christmas party and got quite a big reaction. Probably not the one you want, you would have liked since you do still sometimes come up as a topic of a conversation in the break rooms from time to time as a source of comic relief. <laughs> I'm happy they're having a good time here, spending our billions just walking around in circles. Until you brush up on scientific method and eliminate your bias, you have nothing to offer our community. <laughs> I have no bias. I have bias to the evidence. I show the evidence. I don't show just theories of a whole bunch of different little equations and stuff. And I've done them all. I know them as well as anybody. I can stand in front of every one of these people. I'll show you again. I have to show my evidence because they, they think I'm, I'm just uneducated. Wrong. They are uneducated. Now, I said, let's try a new approach. Excellent. Thank you, my friend. I'm sure I get lots of laughs at your place because I cannot defend myself against simple denials. And that's all they are is denials. Not evidence against my evidence denials. And I only show evidence. This is how you people win by demanding we not think for ourselves and then they just hide in plain sight. And uh, will you get your top people? Now, I asked this guy. He's in, he's in Fermi Lab. Get the top people. Ask anybody. If they go to the break room, say, look, this is what this guy wants to do. Who's going to stand up? And I guarantee you they will not stand up because they cannot stand up. I will win, and I have won already. Will they do a Zoom meeting? I present my work, and your team can show my errors. Any team you want. Get as many people as you can get. And I can respond to those comments back and forth. Not just they make a statement and say, I'm stupid because I don't have the scientific method behind me. No. Sci the scientific method is peer review. It means they get a ton of people that are in this field that have to say what they all say, otherwise they wouldn't be in the field, otherwise they'd be destroyed. Just like Velikowski was for coming up with evidence of facts. They destroyed his life. All right. So the peer review is to gang up and dismiss without anybody being able to redress things. And I asked, I said, will you peer review me? He said, no, you're not, we won't peer review you because you're not peer reviewed. I said, well, who's going to peer review me? Nobody will. I said, well, well, how does that work then? Well, you're not peer reviewed, so you don't get to talk. <laughs> 
we don't like what you say, basically. So, therefore, Fermilab has absolutely nothing to offer humanity but empty, arrogant failures for, I don't know how, many, how long they've been in business, at least 30 years or so. It's a literal money vacuum. You know how much of our money goes into that place? And they spit out literal trash. I said, stand up for yourself. Let's talk. My bias is to discuss evidence. I have no bridges to burn. You guys burnt them all. Not me. Let's discuss. How about we do that? And there's my email, rspur at gmail.com. Now, I obviously can't ever answer everybody's emails. I have a lot of ton of other work going on, too, at the same time. But this is very important because I think we can get free energy. And I'm showing you what Don Lincoln shows. Let's get back to the actual evidence that I support, that I've shown to support my statements. I'm not just making blank statements like they do at Fermi Lab and all these other places. And they are converting over their equipment right now to do exactly what we've been doing. Only exactly, actually, no. They're converting it over to do what they're doing with photons, squeezing them with electric fields, I believe, to put them through, make venturis. But they're still hitting them head on. You don't have to do that. No need.